Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. My name is Evan. I'm from Central Jersey. And um, my demo is 1980s Lego 8-bit robotics. So in 1986, Lego made this thing. You see it does say Lego on the front. And this is an 87 model Lego group. This is called Interface A. It is only sold to schools. It was sold to wealthy suburban schools, and it was a huge flop. So um, this is two generations before Mindstorms, because they had a 16-bit system in like the Windows 95 era called Control Lab. Um, so this is 12 years before Mindstorms existed. And it is fully programmable in your 1980s 8-bit computer in basic logo assembly code or something proprietary called Lego Lines. I use BASIC. BASIC for young people is a lot like Python. It's an interpreted command line general purpose language. Um, that a lot of adolescents like me learned in the 80s. So was this meant as kind of like a, like we think of some of the Lego education products today, that type of thing? Yes, it was sold through DACTA, Lego's education okay, division. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lego endorsed it for five specific computers, the Apple II, the BBC Micro, Commerce 64, IBM PC, and a European computer called a Philips P2000. I'm working on getting one of those. <laughs> um, and it's been hacked since then by my friends and I to work on lots of other computers. Anything with a parallel port could talk to it. Um, with a real hack, you could use a serial port. Anyway, um, these, none of these have hard drives. Uh, the first, third, and fourth running off five and a quarter floppy disk. This one's running off a cassette tape. <laughs> um, so I built four demos. This is a seven by five uh, sign matrix. That's a text on the screen, Hello Brick Fair. I made a character set. Go to brickhacks.com, which is my website. Demo by Evan, that's me. This is called a useless machine. Do you know what a useless machine is? I mean, based on the name, I could guess. A useless machine has one function, it turns itself off. Okay, then. This is a little robot, if I may. Um, 1980s period joystick. The biggest problem is that people run over the wires. Right? And that is a game I made. You can play it if you want. Just follow the instructions on the screen. It puts a random number on the screen, one to three, and a random number of lights on, and you choose true or false or you wait and it times out. But just the models are not impressive. The point of the models is to show the power. Of, and again, obviously the computer's not Lego, but these are the computers that were endorsed by Lego to use back then. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, thank you. This and is a really unique let setup here. A lot of people <laughs> use emulation or modern SD things that are floppy drives, but my other hobby is retro computing. So I want to use all the real stuff. These yeah. are all from the early to mid 80s. Tell us a little bit more about each of these setups here, especially for, for people like myself that aren't very familiar with these. Uh, what is it you want to know? I'm not sure what to uh, tell you. So yeah, like, like how the, the, the keyboards and some of these boxes kind of work together and kind of just okay. uh, the, the story behind some of these. Okay, well for example, the IBM PC looks like what you know as a PC. It's a box and a keyboard, right? Mm -hmm. the, on most of the 80s computers, the computer is all one. Okay. Those aren't keyboards, those are the computers, okay. right? Um, and so essentially, you're just sending, there's eight bits in a byte, and no matter what language you use, you're telling which bits you want on and which bits you want to listen to. And you just program, you know, almost one level above binary code, you're programming, well, two levels above, you're programming which ones to turn on or off and which ones to listen to. Each box is an always on test port, six outputs and two inputs. So the outputs are 4.5 volt lights and motors, and the inputs are touch and optical sensors, and that's it. That's why actually the useless machine is my favorite demo, because this one is lights only, that's joystick and motor, and that's lights and touch sensors, but this is showing all four functions. This shows an optical sensor for where it's positioned, a touch sensor to start it, lights and motor inside. So this is the only one showing all four functions of it. Mm -hmm. Now, are these uh, setups like readily available or uh, when, to, to get all these to kind of demonstrate the, the builds here? The short answer is no. Um, <laughs> on my website at brickhacks.com, I have schematics and all sorts of technical advice and whatever else. Um, first, you need to have a period appropriate computer and know how to operate it. Second, you need to have this box. Third, you need to have a special connection between a box and a computer. Fourth, you need to have the right software. And fifth, you have to build Legos. <laughs> so there's a lot to know, and it's all explained on my website. OK, nice. We'll make sure to link in the description to that if people want to get more info on that. Have you had a chance to talk to anyone at Lego that liked helped design this system or anything like that, or kind of learn more of that history? Yes. Actually, on LinkedIn, I tracked down an engineer in Denmark who helped design it. <laughs> and also, a lot of stuff, a lot of it, software-wise, was designed at MIT. And those people are out there. So I've talked to one guy at Lego who worked on it. I talked to several of the MIT engineers, and I've got most of the backstory documented on my website. A little fun tidbit, 
this robot is actually not my mock. This is a Lego set, this robot. Lego set 1038 called Universal Buggy. This is from 1985. And according to the engineer at Lego who built it, he said at the time, this was the fastest they ever went from an idea to a set you could buy. Wow. The rest of it's all my own creation. <laughs> yeah. So what is the public reaction like? Because this is such a different display from everything else we see here at the show. What is it? What is that experience like putting this on display? Well, Todd, the organizer of the show, had no idea what to do with me. <laughs> He's like, you're not mine. What, he didn't know what to do with me. Um, guys my age, Gen X and older, nod knowingly. But they say, wait a minute, but that's not a Lego. What's that? I say, yeah, oh, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I think I met one person so far this weekend. I've been here since Wednesday who knew what this was. People guess it's an old train controller, close, but no cigar. Um, a lot of young people say, well, that's great. Where'd you hide your Arduino? Microcontrollers <laughs> of a kind. Um, so almost no one knows what this is. And I love educating them. Would you say that this product had an impact on things like Mindstorms and some of those things we saw later on from Lego? Yes. Um, the MIT folks who designed the software were the same people who did Mindstorms. Okay. Um, this was out from 86 to like 91 or so, and as early as 88, they had prototypes of the Mindstorms box in their labs. So, very big impact. Yep. Yeah. And Lego realized that this had some serious limitations. Number one being the wires. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are a lot of wires when you look around the if setup you, here. If you want to come to the back yep. for a minute, you see how much power it takes to do this. <laughs> it's the power it takes to do this. Very impressive just looking at it from this That's angle. I kind of hog the power for the booth. <laughs> yeah. So. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for explaining this. It's such a unique part of Lego history as well as just kind of the computing history you've got on display here as well. So what are your plans for this in the future? Do you have other shows you're taking it to? Yeah, I go to Brickworld every year. Okay. I'm um, from New Jersey. I made the trip out there. So two years ago, I got kind of famous as the guy who made the Chevy V8 engine, mm -hmm. which is a video on an FAQ on BrickHacks.com. Uh, this is sort of an interim exhibit because my built my big things all take a couple years to build. My next big thing is I'm working on a life-size playable Donkey Kong machine. A lot of people have said, oh, that's been done, but it hasn't. What people have done is take a digital screen, put a Lego cabinet around it, and say, that's Lego Donkey Kong. No, it's not. Um, the insides are not Lego. I'm building a, a mechanical playable Donkey Kong machine out of Lego. Mario move around, barrels, ladders, princess, Donkey Kong, all out of Lego, controlled by an Apple II and a joystick. If anyone, beats, impress it. if anyone beats me to that, more power to them. <laughs> also, one last thing I'll mention, since yeah. you have a big audience, um, I have a prototype of this box. Um, if anyone else has one, I'd like to talk to them. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, feel free to leave a comment or go to the website, reach out and uh, get in touch. But once again, thank you so much. All right, thank you.